Yo, what is going on, you guys? It's your boy, King Sanders here, and we are back with another day of sports betting. This is going to be for Saturday, May 21st slate of NBA and MLB action. I'm super excited to dive into it because we do have a full slate of sports once again. Um, we do have the Heat and the Celtics Game 3 of the Eastern Conference Finals, which should be really exciting, should be really fun to watch. I'm really excited for that game, and of course, I do have a bet from that game. And then I do have two more MLB bets. We have a full slate of MLB starting, I believe the first game is the Diamondbacks versus the Cubs. I think it starts around noon-ish. Um, and then we have games all the way through the rest of the night. So I am really excited to sit down and have a casual day, watch some sports tomorrow. Um, I'm really excited to watch some MLB later in, or you know throughout the day. And then, of course, watch the uh, NBA playoff game during the night. So I'm really excited about that. But um, before we go ahead and dive into today's plays or even the recap, there um, the first things first, I did just want to go ahead and say that we are still currently on the road to 7,000 subscribers. By the way, I do think I'm going to be doing a giveaway here soon, probably at the end of next week, uh, just because I haven't done one in a while. We haven't hit 7,000 subscribers, and we have been pretty steady um we haven't really gained any subscribers in a very long time and so because of that i i want to be able to still give do a giveaway here for you guys so probably by the end of next week just be just be expecting it for sure um but without any further ado like i said we're on the road to 7,000. so if you guys aren't new make sure you guys do like comment subscribe turn on that notification bell so you guys know whenever i post Next, I did just want to go ahead and give a quick shout out here to all of our members here on the channel. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys do. And thank you guys so much for giving such a small channel such a big chance, as I always say. Now, without any further ado, we'll go ahead and dive into it. Um, yesterday, we did have a pretty, uh, it was a pretty weird day. So we'll go ahead and talk about it just a little bit. We did have Dorian Finney-Smith under 17 and a half PRAs and a little fun, <clears throat> excuse me, and a little fun fact, Dorian Finney-Smith had more PRAs in the first quarter of this game than he has had over the course of the past three games. Um, so he had a really good first quarter. And truthfully, the Dallas Mavericks, their role players, had a, they had a really good game just overall, especially since Luka, um, I mean, Luka didn't play bad, but he just didn't play Luka-esque. If you, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, but he didn't have a Luka-type game, and so a lot of the role players did step up. Jalen Brunson had a fantastic game. Dorian Finney-Smith had a pretty good game. Um, and a lot of his PRAs did come from the first quarter, so that one definitely hurt us. Um, but that one, that one we did end up losing. Then we did have the Cardinals and the Pirates under eight runs. This one did end up being a push. Um, so apparently the line moved. Um, I think it was like right after I posted the video. So if you guys did end up getting it at nine runs and you took the under, then you would have cashed. But unfortunately, I took it at under eight runs for the plus 100 odds. And that one did not end up working out for us. Um, it, he They ended up right at eight. And mostly it was just because the it, it was really low scoring. I think it was one to zero throughout the first like five innings or four innings, something like that. But I believe in the fifth inning, the Cardinals, they ended up scoring four runs, getting to that five. And then the Pirates did try to play catch up just a little bit. And they ended up uh, with three runs. And so they, so like I said, it was a push at eight. So that one was kind of unfortunate, but then we did have the twins money line versus the Royals. That one did end up working out for us, despite it being a pretty low game, low scoring game. Um, it, the twins were able to pull out the W. So we ended up going one, one and one on the day. Um, but if you guys did end up getting the Cardinals and the, oh my gosh, the Cardinals and like the Cardinals under, then it would have ended up working out for you if you would have got it at nine. So Without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into today's plays, though. Our first play of the day, we're taking Jimmy Butler under four and a half assists here versus Boston at plus 115 odds. Now, if you take a look at it, Jimmy Butler in his last two games here during this series, he has had three assists and five assists. So he's gone over in one and he's gone under in one. But if you look at the Boston Celtics defense, we all know that they're a very, very good defensive team. And in the last seven games, they've allowed the fourth fewest assists per game to opposing small forwards. Now, Jimmy Butler, he has seen quite a bit of usage, but I think that it is going to be slightly different in this game. And let me let me kind of explain why. So first things first, both these teams play at a super slow pace. I didn't I didn't snag the numbers exactly, but both of these teams last time I checked were in the bottom five in pace. So they play at a super, super slow pace. And not to mention the odds makers do have this line set at 207 and a half for the over under. So that's still a pretty pretty low over under. Um, now he we are only asking 
or the line is only four and a half, so he would only have to get five assists. But I still just don't really think that it's going to be happening. Also, if you take a look at it, the some of the main players here for the Miami Heat, which would be like scoring wise, which would be Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Tyler Hero. Well, if you take a look at it, Tyler Hero really hasn't been playing super well. Excuse me, and neither has Bam Adebayo. So both those p- players have not really been playing well. So Jimmy has had to kind of step up and take a huge role in this game, basically be their do-it-all kind of guy with the with the scoring, with the rebounding, stuff like that. So I just don't really foresee him like being forced to pass the ball a whole lot today. I think that he is going to be taking a ton of shots and going to be having a big game. I do love his over in points too. I just wanted to take the under and assists. I feel like it... I feel like at plus 115 odds, I think that that is a very solid value. So that is going to be our first play of the day. Jimmy Butler under four and a half assists here versus Boston at plus 115 odds. Now our second play of the day, we're taking the Red Sox and the Mariners under nine runs at minus 105 odds. Now Boston, they have gone 11 and seven to the under at home this year. So they have gone under a lot more often than not at home. And also um, on the, on the second game of a day with no rest. So essentially what this means is, um, let's say the, these two teams played yesterday, then the next day would be considered the day with no rest. So it's essentially just no days off in between Boston is 12, six and three to the under with no rest and Seattle, they are 16 and eight to the under on the road. So they have gone under a ton on the road. Um, not, not over very often. So I really do like this play a lot. Also, the Mariners as a road underdog this year, they are 13 and nine to the under. So I think we see a ton of value here and Garrett Whitlock, despite him, I mean, he hasn't really had a terrible season, but he just hasn't really been great. But at home this year, he's had a 2.7 ERA. So he's been really good at home this year. So hopefully that does end up giving us just a little bit of an edge there. So that's going to be our second play of the day. Red Sox and Mariners under nine runs at minus 105 odds. Now, for our third and final play of the day, we're going to be taking the Padres and the Giants. We're taking their over seven runs at minus 105 odds. Now, if you take a look at it, the Giants at home this year, they have gone over quite frequently. They're 11 and 7 to the over at home. And the Giants in their last nine games, they have actually gone over in seven of them. So they have actually been really good at not only giving up a decent amount of runs, but also they have been really good at getting hits and scoring a lot of runs. So I think we see a ton of value here for a red hot team here for the Giants. And also the Giants after a loss, which they did just recently have, they are nine and five to the over. So they love to get in these bounce back situations where they just absolutely blister baseballs. And I'm going to be taking it, especially with a low over under at seven. And also the Padres on the road this year, they are 12 and nine to the over. So they have been pretty good on the road, especially when it comes to scoring runs. And after a win, which they did recently just have, they are 13 and 10 to the over. So they love to get in these little streaks and um, go on little, go on little hitting spurts. So that is going to be our third and final play of the day. Padres and Giants over seven runs at minus 105 odds. So that is going to do it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you guys know whenever I post. Um, Like I said, we are on the road to 7,000 subscribers, so make sure that you guys are subbed. Um, It truly does mean a lot to me. Um, I really want to be able to hit this 7,000 super bad. But without any further ado, that's going to be it. This is King Sanderson and out. Peace.